I will talk to you about the uh, parotid uh, uh, gland, which is the largest salivary uh, gland. In the previous lecture, we talked about the uh, submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. And uh, in this uh, lecture, we'll talk to you about the uh, parotid uh, gland. First of all, let us define the parotid, what we call the, the parotid region before defining the parotid gland. Anyway, this is the parotid gland, but this is the parotid uh, region, guys, in which it comprises, it contains the parotid gland, which is uh, indeed the region that's located in the lateral surface of your um, face, as you see uh, here. And the parotid region, it includes the parotid gland and the different important structures that related to that gland. Okay, let us uh, directly start talking about the parotid gland. This is the parotid gland uh, uh, shown on the lateral surface uh, of the uh, face. When you look at it uh, uh, laterally and I mean externally and laterally, it looks like an inverted uh, a triangle. Look at it. It's like inverted triangle in which the base is uh, directed above and the apex directed uh, below. As I mentioned earlier, it's considered um, the largest salivary gland. Now, let us uh, define its location exactly. Okay, look at it here, guys, which is easy to remember and to localize. This is the external uh, auditory um, meatus. So, it's just located below this opening because below the external auditory meatus of course it's not that much deep it's located subcutaneously and if you look to the mandible this is the body of the mandible and here is the i would say the angle of course and this is the ramus of the mandible so this is the ramus of the mandible so it's located guys superficial it's like it's like this right so it's located superficial posterior and deep to the ramus if you say this is the ramus for example so it's like that right so it's superficial posterior and when you go deep uh, deep to the uh, ramus and furthermore guys it's in the front of this muscle which is very well known muscle known as sternocleidomastoid um, muscle so it's directly anterior to its anterior border right and at the same time um, if we talk about the muscles its relation to muscles other than the sternocleidomastoid there is a muscle here with that known as masseter muscle this is a masseter muscle in which the parotid gland covers its posterior, uh, say, its posterior half of masseter muscle. So, by this way, you can easily um, uh, uh, define its location. So, it's located okay, subcutaneously, below external uh, auditory meatus. Or acoustic meatus, it is indeed lateral, or you can say superficial, posterior and deep to the ramus of the mandible that's located here. It's anterior to sternocleidomastoid, and at the same time, it covers the posterior half of the masseter muscle. Let us take a, let us take a cross section for the. Uh, parotid gland and you will see that when you look at it it's like a triangular shape again it's like a wood shape uh, in horizontal section in which the base of it is like directed laterally now right and the apex is directed toward the uh, uh, pharyngeal wall now 
if you look at it also you can say okay it's like a wood shape and by this way you can notice that there are three surfaces the uh, follow the colors right the lateral one the red okay this is the lateral surface and still we have two surfaces one anterior medial and one posterior medial right so this one surface another surface and third surface look at it this is the ramus of the mandible so uh, we take a cross section because you know this is the ramus of the mandible and say so and the gland will be deep to it and posterior to it relatively like that so take a cross section you will see the gland here and the mandible you will see it like this look at it here anterior to it right and in the back mastoid process this is the mastoid mastoid process here this is the mastoid process and this is the ramus of the mandible right so cut it here cut the gland and cut the mastoid process which is uh, up, um, uh, like a protruded bone behind the ear so here we go so i think now you have an idea about that and very important we'll talk more about that uh, but uh, for now you have to know that the facial nerve cranial nerve number seven it's very important to know that the facial nerve passes horizontally through the gland itself you see here is the facial nerve passes through the gland and by this way it divides it into superficial part and deep part so again here is the uh, facial nerve that passes through the gland itself as you know that the uh, barotid gland is like an irregular lobulated uh, mass so it sends a uh, couple of processes as you see uh, here in different or various directions let me show you briefly uh, where those uh, processes uh, well first of all there is a small process or projection up from that from the parotid gland which is behind the temporomandibular joint but anterior to the external acoustic meatus auditory meatus so this process is known as glenoid process on the other hand there is a process which is toward the face and it's known as facial process now from facial process there is a small also process there which is you know uh, that lying uh, uh, along the barotid duct so and it's known as accessory process furthermore there is a process which is uh, behind the external the uh, carotid artery and this is a process that's located behind it known as carotid process still now in the deep part of the gland there is a process which is located of course deep between say this is for example the uh, 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 the mandible this is the angle this is the ramus and this is the uh, uh, body so there is a process known as pterygoid process this one which is located here and it's located between the medial pterygoid uh, muscle and the uh, ramus right so and this is the ramus so it's located here so this is a process known as pterygoid process 
So most importantly, guys, uh, let us talk about the capsule. So the parotid uh, glands is enclosed in two capsules. The inner, there is one inner connective, uh, inner capsule formed from connective tissue. And there is an outer fibrous, dense fibrous capsule also from out side as you see um, here well guys the outer one this dense fibrous one it comes uh, from the investing layer of deep cervical fascia just go get it and see or look to your textbook uh, in the neck there is a deep fascia this deep fascia encircles or uh, covers the neck and it arises up and once it reaches the parotid gland it divides or splits into uh, two parts superficial lamina and deep lamina right so then each one will connect it to uh, bone uh, in the skull one is the uh, the superficial one will connect to the zygomatic arch and the deep one will attach to the tympanic uh, plate so uh, as I mentioned the deep cervical uh, fascia extends upward once it reaches the inferior border of the gland again it's split to superficial and deep layer so guys and each one attached to uh, different bone zygomatic arch or tympanic plate for the deep layer well there is one thing uh, still I have to say look at it here that shows there is a something there's a ligament which is known as stylomandibular ligament this is the styloid process of temporal bone so uh, there is a, 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 a fascia that um, indeed a portion of fascia that extended from the styloid process to the angle of the mandible so this fascia that's uh, attached to the styloid process and angle of the mandible known as stylo mandibular ligament so this ligament stylo mandibular ligament and it separates the parotid gland uh, uh, partially from the submandibular gland okay look at the cross section of the parotid uh, gland there, there there are a couple of structures like um, uh, superficial to the gland um, there are a couple of structures would be superior uh, to it and some of them and posterior lateral and some of them and or posterior medial sorry like this this is a posterior medial and anterior uh, medial so let us guys start with the uh, superficial uh, uh, structures indeed you will see that you, you know that it's the part of the glands located uh, subcutaneously so laterally you will see that there is a, a skin and superficial fascia and in the superficial fascia there is a cutaneous that is known as greater auricular nerves look at them these are you can see it here in the figure below this is a great auricular uh, nerves look at them here so they give a branch lateral to the uh, parotid gland this is the parotid gland and of course there is a parotid lymph nodes so skin superficial fascia parotid um, lymph nodes and greater auricular nerve as you see here which is a branch of cervical plexus c2 c3 now uh, let us uh, move a little bit superiorly what we can see 
are fine superior to the uh, England relatively guys you would see that this is again the gland and um, I would say superiorly um, there is external auditory uh, meatus here and TMG uh, joint temporomandibular joint and of course here is the glenoid process which is uh, related to the uh, auriculotemporal auricular temporal nerve this is the auriculotemporal uh, nerve which is the auriculotemporal nerve is a branch of the posterior division of v3 mandibular nerve i mean right that passes just to the front of uh, external auditory uh, meatus so this is the glenoid process of it which is related to auriculotemporal uh, nerve so this is uh, now we covered the superficial relation to the gland and the superior relation as well now let us move to the anterior uh, medial relation so we are talking about these structures guys because this is the anterior medial uh, anterior medial surface right so the gland guys is related first of all to this ligament which is the uh, stylomandibular ligament because you know this is the styloid process and there's a fascia that creates a kind of uh, ligament attached to the uh, uh, to the mandible so this uh, uh, indeed guys uh, this uh, uh, stylomandibular uh, ligament uh, that uh, originates from the styloid process and inserted into the angle of the mandible although this is the ramus I know but uh, you know it separates the parotid gland from the um, submandibular gland anyway so we have submandibular stylomandibular stylo uh, ligament and we have medial pterygoid muscle and we have the posterior border of the ramus of mandible and we have lateral to it the masseter uh, muscle guys or even you can say you can say the posterior part of it or you can say the masseter uh, muscle also you can see here the terminal branch of um, facial nerve because it divides into five terminal branches. So, so this is again a cross section at the level of mastoid process that's located uh, behind the gland. So look at the ramus of the mandible that uh, cut in here, which is medial. There is medial pterygoid muscle lateral to it, masseter muscle, and look at the gland that's located lateral posterior and relatively deep to the uh, ramus of the mandible and look at the facial nerve which is very important how it crosses inside or through the gland itself now what about the posterior medial structures these structures guys in which you will find the carotid sheath and its contents and the styloid process with the muscles around it Furthermore, you will find the facial nerve that will pass then through the parotid gland and of course mastoid process that's located behind the ear that's you know connected to the posterior pili of the gastric uh, that's related to the posterior pili of the gastric muscle and the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle that's of course attached uh, to it. So these are the structures that's located posterior medial to the uh, parotid gland uh, as I mentioned uh, the uh, structures that related uh, either anterior medial uh, or uh, anterior posterior medial sorry and anterior medial to the parotid gland that in this case you know the parotid gland just uh, I would say removed uh, so these structures that you see here deep to it are known as uh, Barotid bit. So let us again 
repeat those uh, structures. So, uh, as I mentioned, guys, the uh, uh, posterior medial relation to the parotid gland will include the carotid sheath and its content. And in this case, you will find the uh, the carotid sheath should be like here and it's extended below. So, inside it, there is internal uh, carotid artery, internal jugular vein. Uh, we have also the vagus nerve here, shown here, and the uh, uh, accessory, spinal accessory nerve, and the cranial nerve number nine, glossopharyngeal nerve. So, let me show you here. So, here is the carotid sheath, guys, and the structures uh, inside it. Yes, so this is the carotid sheath, and this is the internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein, cranial nerve number 10, 11, or let's start from 9, 10, 11, and 12. That means close pharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve, which is medial to the internal carotid and internal jugular vein, and of course, accessory nerve and hypo glossal nerve. Also, what we have posterior medially, guys, is the um, styloid process here and the three muscles attached to, including the stylohyoid, styloglossus, and stylopharyngeus. Also, we have the facial nerve, guys, here but that should move inside the gland but it's retracted a little bit to the back and we have the mastoid process and the muscles those attached including uh, uh, posterior pili of the gastric muscle and sternocleidomastoid that not shown here but anteromedially guys uh, in this figure you will see just the ramus here, of course, should be the masseter muscle here, and that's covered like the part of gland will cover the posterior part of it, or posterior half of it, and medial to the ramus here you will see the uh, medial tergoid muscle. In this figure, again, this is the ramus, medial tergoid, and masseter. Okay, again, these structures, guys, uh, are known as Barotid bit. Not just the structures that located uh, medial to the uh, 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 gland, but also, which is very important, you have to know that inside the gland uh, itself, inside the parotid gland itself, there are a couple of structures. They are important structures, and you have to know the arrangement from superficial. To the deep so inside the gland you have guys uh, the facial nerve and you know it becomes like difficult to remove the parotid gland without creating an injury to the facial uh, nerve but anyway it passes through the gland also the retro mandibular vein deep to it deep to it we have the external carotid artery with its branch because it gives a couple of branches inside the gland and the auriculotemporal nerve which is a branch of V3 mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve so guys the retromandibular if let us draw the gland say the retromandibular vein formed guys inside the uh, gland Right, so it's formed from the superficial temporal vein and maxillary vein. So this is the retro mandibular vein. So it goes all the way down until it reaches the lower border of part of the gland. Then it divides again 
into its two branches. So this is the retro mandibular vein. Inside it, of course, you know, the card, the uh, external carotid artery, it gives uh, like a couple of a branch inside it, uh, of course, including the uh, maxillary artery. And of course, the uh, uh, there is a transverse facial artery here and the, uh, I would say, posterior auricular artery. So the, the external carotid artery gives a branch inside the gland itself. So, uh, yes, so these structures are important to know and you have to know the arrangement from superficial to deep. The parotid uh, gland that uh, shown here, guys, exactly from the facial process of the parotid gland, there is a duct that um, arises from there, which is about five centimeters uh, long, and uh, uh, it passes forward, as you see here, lateral to the masseter muscle. This is the masseter muscle guys so the part of the gland passes uh, lateral uh, to it until it reaches the boxinator uh, muscle of course guys uh, it's about uh, say one finger breadth uh, below the uh, zygomatic arch this is the zygomatic arch and the part of the duct is about one finger breadth below it so most importantly guys uh we i will show you how to uh exactly determine the location of the parotid duct but first of all look at the parotid duct and look at the structures that accompany it there are three structures mainly accompany uh, the part duct. First of all, is the transverse facial artery. Look at this uh, transverse facial artery. So this is the first structure, and there is. Uh, I will change another. Use another pin. Okay, and above it and below it, there is a branch of nerves which is related to the facial nerve. They are the upper buccal branch of facial nerve and lower buccal branch of facial nerve so we have three structures transverse facial vessel superior and inferior buccal branch of facial nerve you know guys that the facial nerve divides uh, inside the uh, parotid uh, gland into five branches okay so here is the parotid gland, guys, and this is the parotid duct that uh, passes lateral to the masseter muscle until it reaches the anterior border of it, and uh, uh, then it uh, pierces the buccinator muscle and uh, buccal mucosa deep to it at the level of the third molar so here is the third, the upper third molar but then the duct guys will passes inside the buccal mucosa a little bit to the front then it again pierces the oral mucosa at the level of the second upper molar so you have to differentiate guys between the uh, uh, the, the uh, when the duct pierces pierces the buccinator muscle and buccal mucosa and when it's really uh, pierces the oral mucosa as you see here now here is at the level of the second upper second molar teeth but as I mentioned, the parotid duct pierces the buccinator muscle and buccal mucosa at the level of third, uh, upper third molar. This is important. 
So again, guys, uh, look at the oblique passage of the uh, barotid duct uh, uh, here in the buccinator muscle because it's a buccinator. So it purses it like obliquely, right? And this creates a kind of uh, a valve-like mechanism to prevent any inflation uh, of the duct during uh, plowing. Let us determine exactly where is the barotid duct. Well, simply, guys, uh, there is a way, easy way to determine that. Just to draw an imaginary line from the tragus of the auricle. So this is one point, and draw another point between uh, the ala of noise and the upper lip. So in between should be this point. You know, some authority can, you know, some authority said no, just the upper lip, but this is what exactly. Um, the the figure is not one hundred percent correct. So then draw like a line here. So and divide it into three parts. Right, there's one, two, uh, three. So the middle, the middle one third of this line is the location of the barotid uh, duct. We need some time to know where is the point of exit of the parotid duct. Okay, you know this line. You are familiar, guys, with this line from tragus up to the um, uh, point between the uh, ala and upper lip. Or you can say the upper lip, it's okay. Then draw a vertical line. Uh, and this line should be crossing the mid of the zygomatic arch. This is the zygomatic arch, right? So midpoint is here. Draw a vertical line. So this point of a crossing between this line and this line is the point of exit of parotid duct from the uh, facial process of parotid gland. Okay. Again, is it clear? So this point that I wanted, the point of exit of parotid duct from the gland. It's the uh, location of crossing of this line with the vertical line. Uh, arterial supply and venous drainage, it's pretty easy. If you remember the uh, structures inside the gland itself, you remember that we mentioned most laterally, we have guys the facial nerve that divides inside the gland itself into a couple of branches to five branches mainly and deep to it we have a retromandibular uh, vein deep to the retromandibular vein there is a external carotid artery with its branch and deep to it the auriculotemporal nerve however so if you remember these structures that means you will conclude that the arterial supply of the gland, of the parotid gland, is the from the external carotid artery and its branch. And what about the venous drainage? Of course, the venous drainage will be uh, through will be accom uh, accomplished by the uh, through the retromandibular vein that formed inside it, right? But what about the lymphatics, guys? Is there another figure? This is like larger than the previous one. You know that inside the gland, there is a, inside the capsule of the gland, there is a, a parotid lymphatic node. So the drainage of the gland will be first to the parotid uh, lymphatic nodes, and then from there, uh, it will drain into the deep uh, uh, lymph, uh, deep cervical lymph uh, nodes. Uh, um, nerve supply of the uh, uh, gland in which uh, the nerve supply for parts of the gland can be divided into two parts. The first one will talk about the sensation and the second part about secretomotor uh, 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 secretomotor part. Now for the sensation, regarding the sensation guys, the sensation uh, from the baroted sheath 
and uh, as well as the overlying skin um, is um, they are covered by two nerves auricular temporal nerve and the great auricular nerve look at it here this is the parotid gland and the sensation as i mentioned from the parotid gland from the uh, uh, parotid sheath and the overlying skin here carried by this nerve auricular temporal nerve which is a branch of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve right and also from or carried by the sensation i mean carried by the great auricular nerve right so this is about the sensation now let us uh, move to the second part of the innervation which is related to the uh, secretion so you know for uh, secretomotor part we have to talk about the sympathetic part and parasympathetic part so I want you guys to remember let us remember together that uh, you know in the parotid gland guys uh, there is a external carotid artery and its branch and around this artery of course there's a kind of plexus create like uh, there is a, a kind of a plexus around it around the vessels so these sympathetic plexus of course that comes from t1 and uh, that's then transmitted to the uh, uh, superior cervical sympathetic ganglion um, that's located in the um, up in the, in the neck then it will transmit through the as a plexus around the external carotid artery that passes through the gland so the sympathetic um, uh, innervation through sympathetic plexus around the external carotid artery comes from uh, T1 in the spinal cord so you know that the sympathetic may reduce the secretion of the gland but opposite to that is the parasympathetic innervation which may stimulate the uh, uh, the gland and they produce uh, a kind of a thin watery saliva in case for example when you start eating and uh, so forth so let me erase these things okay for the parasympathetic guys uh, it comes mainly let me show you here this is the brain stem and there is a nucleus here which is uh, known as inferior salivatory and uh, nucleus in the upper part of medulla oblongata from there look at the dotted lines the red dotted lines okay follow it so the the pre ganglionic parasympathetic fibers then transmitted through cranial nerve number nine that known as the glossopharyngeal nerve then look at these fibers follow it in the glossopharyngeal nerve then there is a branch of a glossopharyngeal nerve now which is known as tympanic nerve then the fibers continue uh, through the tympanic nerve until it reaches the tympanic plexus because you know that the tympanic nerve participates in the formation of tympanic plexus in the middle ear now from tympanic plexus there is a branch or uh, there is a fiber is known as lesser betrosal nerve lesser betrosal nerve so the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber uh, will continue through it and it, uh, uh, it will carry it and until it reaches you know the lesser betrosal nerve will uh, leave the skull through foramen oval under the foramen oval in the middle cranial fossa there is uh, an ganglion parasympathetic ganglion in the infratemporal fossa known as otic ganglion and this is very important from otic ganglion guys after synapses then the synapses will happen so the, now the post not breathe the post parasympathetic fiber will be transmitted from otic ganglion through the auriculotemporal 
nerve. Even uh, so, again, auriculotemporal nerve. So, guys, the auriculotemporal. So, the auriculotemporal nerve not just uh, uh, carries sensations from the part of the gland, but also it carries um, both ganglionic parasympathetic fiber to the gland. Okay, let me show you here this diagram. Here is the. Now it's important to remember that the uh, uh, the uh, innervation of uh, parotid gland is through glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve number nine. And remember, we mentioned that the innervation of other salivary glands, I mean the um, uh, sublingual and sublingual and submandibular was through cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve. But forget it for now. So for part of the gland, the innervation through cranial nerve number nine, glossopharyngeal nerve, not facial, right? Then, so the fibers transmitted through one of the glossopharyngeal uh, nerve branch that's known as tympanic nerve until it reaches the tympanic plexus in the middle ear. Then there is a branch from tympanic plexus. Look, follow, follow these um, fibers from tympanic plexus. Uh, uh, it continues with one of its tympanic plexus branch known as lesser vitrosal nerve until it, uh, it then it will leave the uh, uh, middle cranial fossa through the foramen oval until it reaches the otic ganglion. Uh, the otic ganglion located just inferior to the foramen oval. Now, post-ganglionic fiber now after the synapses, post-ganglionic fiber, post-ganglionic parasympathetic fiber. We are talking about parasympathetic fiber. And the otic ganglion again is a parasympathetic, parasympathetic ganglion. It's important. And the glossopharyngeal nerve is important. Then the fibers from otic ganglion will be post post ganglionic parasympathetic fiber will be transmitted through the auriculotemporal nerve to the parotid uh, 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 gland. Now, what else we have to say? These are clinical correlation about the parotid duct that because it's superficial, it's under the uh, skin, and so it's superficial to masseter muscle. It's more prone to uh, it's prone to uh, a damage, uh, especially um, uh, during surgical procedure of the face, and sometimes a malignancy in the parotid gland um, can cause uh, a facial palsy because of the facial nerve that passes through it, inside it, and pressed, of course, uh, uh, inside it. So it creates a kind of compression on it. Leads, you know that the facial nerve controls the muscle, the facial uh, uh, muscle. Uh, of course, maybe you heard about the inflammation of the part of the gland. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, it's known as uh, in Arabic Abu um, So the inflammation of the parotid gland, usually viral, uh, because of viral infection. Uh, although now there there is a vaccine for kids at uh, age I think of one year and before getting in the school I think five or six years by age of six years. So to uh, those anyway. Uh, the inflammation of the parotid gland, because you know that the parotid gland, uh, the parotid gland is inside a tough capsule, so this causes like a swelling um, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, gland uh, inside the tough capsule, where is a tight space uh, there. So this will cause as a, uh, as a result for. Uh, swelling of a glenoid process uh, that's up, you know, when you can go back in the, in the lecture and see the uh, glenoid process that's located between external auditorium and TMG joint and causes like a pain uh, during the uh, uh, chewing. So, another clinical. Uh, issue here guys something related to 
gustatory sweating. Gustatory sweating or uh, freeze syndrome, or known as auricular temporal uh, syndrome. So what's happened? The what's happened here, guys, that when you um, smell or eat or try to eat, you know that the parotid gland and uh, salivary gland in general will be stimulated and start the secretion. And in this case, when there is an injury to the auricular temporal uh, nerve, um, in which you know the uh, parasympathetic fibers, both both ganglionic parasympathetic fibers, as I mentioned, transmitted through the auricular temporal uh, nerve. You know that the parasympathetic will stimulate the secretion. So when there is an injury to the auricular temporal uh, nerve, uh, so the result will be like during the process of healing for the nerve, some of the parasympathetic uh, uh, part of parasympathetic fiber that passes through it will join the great auricular nerve, right? And you know that the great auricular nerve uh, is a cutaneous nerve that uh, uh, innervates the uh, uh, skin, so and sweating gland. So as a result, when you Think about eating, or you start eating, and you stimulate the parasympathetic fibers. And in case of injury to the auricular tumor nerve, so the parasympathetic fibers uh, that you know uh, join the great auricular nerve will stimulate it, and then you will see like flushing, um, facial flushing here at the region where auricular temporal nerve. Um, innervating uh, it and start like sweating on your face. This is something called gustatory sweating. Uh, so uh, again, let me uh, make sure you got the idea. So as I mentioned, uh, here is the part of the gland and you know um, Okay, this is a glossopharyngeal nerve, and this is the parasympathetic fibers, and we mentioned all of these things, and lesser betrothal nerve, then this is the otic ganglion, from otic ganglion, the parasympathetic, the postganglionic parasympathetic fiber, the dotted line, will be carried through auriculotemporal nerve. This is normal. But sometime when there is an injury here, you know there is another nerve here, which is the great auricular nerve but great auricular nerve innervates the skin so and the sweating gland in the skin so some of when there is an injury to the auricular temporal nerve the paras some of parasympathetic fiber during healing will join the uh, cutaneous nerve i mean here the great auricular nerve and then the result will be the stimulation of the sweating gland on the skin of your face and the result will be uh, flushing on your facial uh, flushing as you see here at the region of parotid gland and sweating as well so this uh, that was about the uh, barotid gland and uh, thank you guys hope you find value in it